This is Samantha Wolford. Samantha was a stay-at-home mother to five children. Her husband, Ernie, worked two jobs as he did his best to provide for his family. In 2014, Samantha had grown tired of life and she decided she wanted to become rich and famous. Hello, YouTubers. I have been, you know, surfing the web like I always do. And I found a video that, or a, a story, and it has like a video with it. Um, and I'll post links in the description box. This one's really messed up. The problem was that Samantha wasn't very interesting. She didn't provide anything new to the competitive platform, so she struggled to get views. Hey, YouTubers. Um, I was kind of doing some homework and stuff, and of course I veered off to uh, YouTube. I really should be in bed because it's like 3 a.m. <sighs> um, um, okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? Hey, y'all. I'm not just like, hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm kind of out there. Hey, everyone. I wanted to say happy 4th of July with a fireworks display. Samantha's lack of success caused issues in her marriage. After a hard day's work, Ernie enjoyed playing video games, which Samantha hated. She wasn't getting attention from YouTube or her husband, so she decided to take matters into her own hands. In 2015, Samantha called the police in the middle of the night, claiming that her husband had been kidnapped and she was tied up at her home. The police looked into the couple's history and noticed that Samantha had called the police on Ernie more than once, so they brought her in for questioning. Have we heard anything? The interrogation starts with questions about an incident that took place a year before. According to police reports, Ernie had gone to a party and when he got home, Samantha called the police. She claimed that Ernie had attacked her and her children. Is there anything else going on? Anything else make you think you might be cheating? Other than him just being home late, um, he gives me access to his phone, his email, he texts me and stuff. Um, I'm not saying there's nothing going on, but... Uh, why are you home late every night? What's but your, what's your good so far, I mean, it's back there in my mind saying that, yeah, I kind of thought that was the case, but there's no evidence to show that it was mm -hmm. not like back when that happened, which, of course, after that happens, that's going to be my first <laughs> shooting. He's already done it once, doing it again. Huh. But this time... I feel like there's something he hasn't been telling me, but I don't know what. What's your good feeling to you? I think it's something to do with his dad. What do you think would be going on over there? I hate, and I'm usually right, and I hate that, but his dad has a problem with getting involved in things that he don't need to be getting involved with. Such as? Drugs. He's brought drug addicts to my house. I know for a fact. Like, they are jerked out of their mind. Mm -hmm. They stopped by for a minute. It's been since before the last time he came out because when I found out his son was lying to me that he knew his son was cheating on me at that party and he was lying to my face, I told him I didn't need anything to do with him after that. Sure. So he hadn't been back around. Other than he stopped by like two weeks ago for about 10 minutes. So you left job A, went by job B, that you don't even work today. Had to make your dad a pizza and what take it out to his house no and then th then it was dropped and then i was like why is there a vehicle pulling in the drop and it was his dad just stopped by to pick up a pizza a pizza that he made for him samantha is building the narrative that ernie's father uses drugs and ernie is a part of that somehow this would be a great way to explain the kidnapping maybe ernie accrued a very large debt from purchasing the drugs or maybe he worked with his father as a drug dealer. Well, the bat factory ain't very far from his dad's house. It's in Talco. His dad's house is in Talco. Mm -hmm. And with all of the things I've heard about Ernie and all of the things he's let slip mm -hmm. about how good he is at dealing, I almost wonder if he wasn't trying to get his son started as one of his old runners and slowly starting him in. 
I need you to drop this off over at such and such location. I need to drop this off at such and such location. And he was making drops for his dad and bringing him the money back. His wife was so late every day. Has he been using any drugs? No. What about you? No. And I can take a test right now. So you haven't, have you had in the past used any drugs? Me? Mm-hmm. No. Never been involved in mm-hmm. cocaine, methamphetamines, no. no. nothing? No. Ecstasy, no, no. no drugs, no. marijuana? No. no. I tried marijuana once and it was not for me. I was like 15 and wanting to try things. I might have been 16. I was a teenager rebelling. Mm-hmm. And my parents always told me, no, 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 don't do this. Sure. And the, the feeling it gave me that I'm not in control of myself feeling, I haven't touched a single thing since. Well, over the last few days, last week or so, has there really been between you and Aaron and last couple of weeks? Have been okay? Other than just, and I've basically just ignored the fact that he comes home late and not said anything because I don't want to sit and argue with him about it or I don't want him to feel like I'm attacking him. Other than him coming in with typical work stresses, he was late to work, so he had a bad day at work and he comes in in a bad mood and dinner's running a little late, so he's snippy, but just typical spouse things, nothing what about social finances? Finances have been great. Things okay with that? Yeah. Of course, obviously, you understand when something like this happens involving a spouse, obviously, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen the news, you've seen deals when the yeah, wife goes missing, you look at the husband, husband, or vice versa, look at the wife. You know, if the husband's missing, you look at, look at you know, Start with their inner core people, family, friends, all that, and then start working our way out, you know, to make sure that rule all them out first to make sure that they're... Well, I mean, involved. you've got my family here. You can sure. ask them. My mom talks to me every single day. Samantha spends the next 20 minutes explaining the events leading up to when they went to bed together the night Ernie was taken. She describes her duties as a mother as being an inconvenience to her. Her days are filled with misery as she caters to five children and a tired husband. So we went to bed. Or he went to bed. I was trying to find a remote so that I could watch Vampire Diaries because I'm highly addicted to that show. I ended up not able to find the remote. He had his head all covered up and he was, I thought, asleep. He pulled his head off from under the covers and was like, I can't sleep. Why? Because I can't stop thinking. Well, what about? What's going on? I want you. Like... I'm not going to be able to sleep until I can. So we had sex and went to bed and woke up to that all that chaos. <laughs> so it was a perfectly normal day. There was nothing out of the... He was late at home from work, but other than that, there would be nothing that... that lately, that's become normal. And I don't even know, like I said, he said... Usually it's always at Hastings. He told me that... At 2.30, which is an hour before he's supposed to get off work, the design he had made for this new bat had been like an eighth of an inch off, so it was going to cut part of the design off, and then when they shifted it on the bat, it looked completely wrong, so he had to completely redo it. Could be just some big, long, elaborate lie, or it could be perfectly true, I don't know, but he didn't make it home until like 5.40. It's obvious that Samantha did not trust her husband. This could stem from Samantha spending so much time alone with her children that she overanalyzes everything about him. It's also possible he could have a history of being unfaithful. What, what's your first memory of what's going on? What's that? Well, I took an ambulance, so it, it makes it a little harder for me to wake up. Mm-hmm. And I have a prescription with me if you want to see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I can't sleep, it... It's supposed to shut your brain down so you can go to sleep, but also make it to where you can wake up fairly easy. Mm-hmm. Of course. I remember at some point, it was a little after one, I saw the clock. <clears throat> Maybe on my phone. So it it's still pretty foggy because it's fairly early to wake up after taking a sleeping pill. Mm-hmm. Um, Somebody grabbing, somebody jerking the blankets down, which startled me. Mm-hmm. And then something being pressed against my throat, and they grabbed me by the hair and started jerking me out of bed. I, at that point, 
wasn't even aware of what was going on with him until he already had me slammed face down on the ground and was tying my hands together. And I rolled my head and looked to the side and could see some commotion going on, but it was pitch black in my room. One of them had, I don't know if it was attached to their gloves because they're all wearing gloves. I don't know if it was like a mechanism that was attached to a glove or one of those little like headlight things wrapped around their hand or a flashlight. And it sounds crazy, but it seemed like his hand was open and he had a little bit of light coming because it was like a little mini flashlight. It was small. I don't think he had a cell phone in his hand because I, I, if I am remembering perfectly correctly, I feel like his hand was open and it still had light. So I don't know if it was something that was attached to his jacket, but that's how they were seeing. And he flashed in my eyes at one point, which made it seem even harder, which is how I know for a fact, like, when he went like this and flashed it in my face, I swear his hand was open, so he wasn't holding on to something. From the very start of the interrogation, Samantha has appeared very calm, despite the very traumatic situation she has just gone through. Even as she describes the terrifying events that occurred earlier that night, we don't see any emotions associated with a traumatic event. This continues until her children are mentioned in the conversation. The guy that was, they were, it was all guys. I'm, I, didn't, I don't remember hearing a female voice. And to me, I just about to shut up, bitch. Don't make any noise. Don't make me have to hurt you, blah, 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 blah. And hold still, hold your hands together. And I was trying to be as cooperative as possible because I didn't want to die. Mm -hmm. I'll do whatever you say, just please. Don't kill me, I've got kids. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of fighting going on, but I can't tell who's here or what's going on. Just that there's a commotion going on, so I knew that they got to go up. Mm -hmm. And then somebody that was dealing with him said, Get the fuck out of here, get the fuck out of here. And that's when he dragged me over, not far from the kids' bedroom. And I was praying to God, praying to God, they never went over there and realized there was any kids in the house. And they kept hitting him, they kept hitting him. Every time I kept tying things around his head because my eyes were adjusting at this point. And I'm able to see more. And what they were wrapped around his face was what? And I just kept wrapping around his face over and over. So basically, like, this part of his face down was completely wrapped up. I don't even know if he was able to breathe. Mm -hmm. I know that when they wanted an answer from him, they jerked it down like this. But before that, I don't even know if he was able to breathe. And they tucked his head on his back. And I don't know what they used to do that. I didn't see. And then they got him down the stairs and left me upstairs with a guy holding a blade on me. And I could hear him hitting him in the living room and yelling, but I couldn't tell what was being said. And then they told him to break me down. And that's when he brought me down. And it was like they were just using me as a tool to taunt him so that he would talk and I don't even know about what. What kind of questions were they asking? Tell me what you know. Tell me what you know. I know that you know, but they would never let on to what. And then that's when his dad got brought up. He had one of ours put behind bars. So now I'm taking his. Samantha's narrative is slowly coming together. She started with Ernie's father pulling him into the world of drugs, and she ends it with the kidnappers mentioning Ernie's father's name. But why just Ernie and not his wife? Well, Samantha already has an answer to that, ready to go. And they asked him who I was, and he said I was his wife, and they said, so she's just married into your family. She's not actually blood your family. And he said, no, that's my wife. They said, do you want us to have to kill her, too? And he said, no, please don't, please don't. How are my kids? And they hit him in the mouth. Are my kids okay? And they hit him in the mouth, and he said, we wouldn't fucking touch a child. They took me back upstairs before they left. Now, could you hear anything at all that they were saying or what they were talking about as far as... No, when I wasn't in the room. Okay. When you were in the room, what were they talking about or what were they saying? Mostly just... 
Your dad caused this. Keep this in mind. Your dad caused this. And then he would throw jabs at him about being a terrible husband or unappreciative of his life. You had a wife that loves you. Look at her face. Isn't she beautiful? Look how much she loves you. Look how much she's crying. I know you said something about some money or... Yeah. He said, what do I have to do? Please don't tell me what I have to do. And he said... Twenty thousand dollars. You want you want to know what you have to do? Can you come up with twenty thousand dollars in the next five minutes? And he's kind of laughed. What's caused the pain of the kid? And he said, "No, I can't come up with twenty thousand in five minutes. You can take my truck. You can take whatever is in my wallet. I don't have much, but it's the only thing that's worth value I've got." After taking pictures of Samantha's injuries. The detective decides to ask her if she had anything to do with the case, just to see how she reacts. The, uh, you have no idea who might have taken him, who might have been, who might have been there. The only thing I can think of is his dad screwed somebody around and they were trying to get back at him. Mm -hmm. but, you, but you yourself, you didn't have any involvement in this? No. With nothing whatsoever? I had no idea that anything was going on until I was yanked out of bed. Have you, have you been seeing anybody else? Or? No. Okay, so you haven't been. It's not another jealous boyfriend nope. or nothing like that going on? Nope. Nobody that... <laughs> no, when we decided to work things out, we decided to work things out. He's had access to my phone to go through my phone. And when y'all were, were, were split up, was there anybody? No, I go out and visit my mom a lot. I didn't go to the bar there. Okay. And I met quite a few people that were friends and stuff, but... That Nobody that was anything special. Nobody that you were intimate with or no. like that, that would have some kind of an attachment to you no. or anything. The and as far as you yourself, you didn't have any involvement in this whatsoever. No. You didn't you and Ernie didn't get into a fight. No. Things didn't get out of hand. You didn't no. you didn't shoot him, you didn't stab him, you didn't hit him with a bat or no, a piece of metal, kick him in the face, you didn't do anything no. that caused any kind of injuries to No. You're positive about that. Yes. And I'm like gonna, I said, I'm not find anything any different about that. No. Right now, what we've got is, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, what they call tracking dogs. Okay, they track the scent and everything. I've got those dogs. They're probably already up at your house right now. That came from the prison in New Boston. Okay. That's what I asked that guy. One of the other deputies was, "Can I give you some of his clothes? And they're and going to go them. search they're the area where his they're cell phone they're came." Gonna, they're going to be tracking that area where his cell phone. They're going to be tracking the area there at the house. But what I have to make sure from you is that you have absolutely no involvement in this whatsoever. No. Okay. So you, like I said, you two weren't fussing. You weren't no. fighting. Didn't get out of hand. You didn't. Punch him, kick him, stab him, shoot no. him, nothing like that. I'm not going to find out anything any different later once no. we get there. Because the deputies, you know, they're out there right now, you know, basically searching your house from top to bottom for every piece of physical evidence that we can find. To anything that will help them find it. Sure. Well, actually, well, so that's why I want to make sure, because we're going to be checking your phone records, your family's phone records. Was there anybody in your family that's involved in this? Not that I'm aware of, no. Not that you're aware of. No. Would there be any reason why any of your family members wouldn't be involved in what hurt Ernie? Brent's had problems with him in the past, but as far as taking it to the point of kidnapping him, no. Okay. So you think, well, obviously you know Brett's boy, so... You I would know Brett, yes. Okay. So you Very well. So you feel like you don't feel like Brett had any no. problems in this? What about your mom or anybody? Any of them got any problems with Ernie? No. They've had their little problems or whatever, but nothing that would go to this level. No. Okay. Now I'm not going to find any kind of evidence to the contrary that no. you were involved in. What about a polygraph? Would you be willing to take a polygraph? To, yes. To prove to me that you had no involvement, no knowledge, no nothing yes. involved in this? The, and like I said, that's probably going to be a possibility, you know, depending on what we're Sorry, my face gets attached to my phone and it vibrates every time somebody makes a status update. I understand. But part of the procedure also, like I said, we're going to be, you know, checking your phone records for the last few months. You know, is there, we're going to find any kind of, you know, establish anything as far as anybody that's involved in this and uh, connected to your phone? No. Okay. 
You sure about that? Yeah, I would recognize a voice that I knew. No, I'm talking about as far as you being involved in, in, his, in your husband's experience. No. So you had absolutely nothing to do with it? No, I had absolutely nothing to do with this. I would not be this cooperative if I did. Well, I mean, just because a person cooperated doesn't mean they didn't do something. Obviously, if someone wants to throw us off. Have I thought about it? Have I thought about stabbing him? Oh, more than once. Have I thought about shooting him if I had a gun? The thought is, and I'm not going to say the thought hasn't crossed my mind. He's had me to the point that I wanted to kill his ass. And that's what happened last night? No. He didn't have you to that point last night? No. We were not fighting at all. So what what would get you to the point where you want to shoot him or stab him? To see him lay his hands on my kids. When's the last time you did that? Back when I had him arrested. He hasn't and I kids. informed the cops that he's got to stay away from me because after he doing this to my kids. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't, he hasn't done no. that since. Okay. No, that was one of the simulations on us getting back together. He is not allowed to discipline them at all. Okay. So as far as last night? No, we were getting along great. There was nothing. So I'm not going to find anything to the contrary to show another. Deputies aren't going to call me here in a few minutes and say, hey, look, what we found here on the scene is not matching what she's telling us. And the only thing on my phone that wouldn't say to the contrary is he sent me a text message that said, answer your GD phone. Because he said he called me over and over and over and over and over, and I wasn't answering when I was up at the hospital. As far as last But then when I got, this was yesterday. And then when I got home, things were fine. I expected to walk into him being mad because... He swears he called me a million times and I didn't answer. But when I walked in the door, things were fine. Okay. How good fun, baby. And he was just so calm and happy and loving. Okay. Well, like I say, once the investigators are out there, they're not going to call me here in a few minutes and say, look, we found evidence out here to the country and what Samantha's telling you that that's what she's saying and what, what the scene's telling us. Because the scene's going to be able to what you're telling me happened, and when they look at the scene out there, they'll be able to tell that that's what's what's going on. Okay. Now, as far as you're up, you haven't lied to me about anything. No. You haven't forgotten anything. Nothing. Nothing you need to change. Nothing you need to tell me that's any different about what's going on. What actually happened out there? No. So you didn't lay your hands on her. You no. Didn't touch her. You didn't have no. anybody touch her. No. You didn't have any involvement whatsoever. No. In this. Not at all. When the dogs come out there, I mean, they're not going to leave us out there, find them there in the house, under the house, no. the woods around the house, anything like that. God, I hope not. I hope he's sound alive. Sure. Well, I hope so, too. But, um, like I say, that's usually when we have things like this, you know, obviously because you are you were actually there when this happened, so that's why I mean, I'm, so I'm having to ask you all these tough I questions just, and, I and being rough on you on this because... I need I to know the truth. You know, I have to absolutely know the truth that you had no possible involvement in this whatsoever. No. You love her? I do. I wouldn't have gone back if I didn't. What all were you willing to do to help me find her? Whatever it takes. Okay. Do you don't know where he is? No, I don't. I wish I did. You're positive. I'm positive. You have absolutely no idea where he's at. No, I don't. Do you know who we can call to find where he's at? The only one I can think is Ernie, because they kept bringing him up. Other than that, you have no idea. Other than that, I have no idea. None. He doesn't have any friends. I don't go out much. The one friend that I do really have mm-hmm. lives in Silver Springs. Right. I don't like drama. I don't like having outside chaos, so I just stay home. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Near the end of the interrogation, the detective asks Samantha who she thinks may have done this, and that's when she mentions a man named Jonathan Sanford. Samantha went around telling people that her husband was abusive, and Jonathan happened to be one of those people. According to Samantha, Jonathan told her he would take care of her husband. So i tell you what I want to do. I'll give you the opportunity to tell me what's going on here, because I know you're not going to beat that boy. I know for a fact you ain't, uh, or at least that's what we're fixing to prove uh, with evidence when we get out of the car off of, his, off of him. So uh, you hear the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be against you in the court of law. You understand that? Yes, sir. You know your rights? Yes. How do you know your rights? You've been in prison? 
I've been in prison. I've been in uh, juvenile. I've been oh, in I, uh, I, man, what's wrong with you? Hey, well, until here recently, uh, when I before I got out, I just had authority problem. But then I grew up after doing like, six years in prison. Okay. If you, can, uh, if you have a right to talk to a lawyer or have one present with you while I'm questioning you, if you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you for any question you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, do you want to talk to me just a little bit about this? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you what they're saying first because I, I, I think you'll be honest because uh, our bear is dead. He, he's, he's dead. Uh, but now, um, according to Samantha, you was just a bystander. Why, JoJo beat the living crap out of my burning room where we got all the blood and collecting evidence. Got other evidence outside. Uh, we've got enough to definitely prove. I've already seen something on him. I can prove uh, that. Now, what she's doing is she's pointing her finger at you and said, well, hey, John Rebel was just a just a bystander. Um, and then she come back and started saying how you did, you was plotting and want to, to kill him, want to take care of the problem. No, it had nothing to go like that. Well, I think, personally, I think it's over dope deal. What I think. But now, you you tell me, tell, because we, we, we've got everything we need. We've got y'all, uh, we've got the, we, we've got everything. I mean, we're, we're wrapping this up. Now all I need is to know and see what I'm going to charge you with. Uh, if it's going to be for murder or if, or if you're going to uh, uh, cooperate and we find out possibly because I can't make you no promises. I know. I know. So now you, you tell me what happened. Okay, this all started yesterday. Like you said, yeah, we talked to her about her problem with her husband and all that. Mm -hmm. Never did I plot to kill the guy. I have a problem with males hitting females. And I do too. That's what me and JoJo done fought three or four times over because he has a bad habit of putting his hands on his fiance. I agree. You're can't, right. Can't do it. She had a bad habit. Dude treated her like shit. I said, hell, if it was me, I, I just, I'm accustomed to settling shit by fighting. Simple as that. I spent most of my life blocked okay. up. So far, you and her are matching on your story. That's exactly what she said. So. And I told her, I said, if anything ever happened, like yesterday, she was with us. He claimed he called her like 13, 14 times and had an attitude with her. He didn't. I had the phone in my pocket. I know he didn't call. The phone log on her phone shows that he only called one time at 12 something and then another time at 5 something. Both times she answered the phone. So he had an attitude, do a hissy fit. And she said, well, he's all mad. Who well, told me this, that? I said, well, look, I said, it's like this. I just met you. I don't know too much about you, but you're my ex's, one of my ex's best friends. I'm here to help my, my homegirl out because really she's just a real close mm -hmm. friend, like a little sister to me. She didn't have nobody there to help her. Her mom loves me to death, and that's about the only thing she could get. Well, I told her, I said, look, if I ain't even gonna lie, if I see you tomorrow with bruises because by this time she had offered me to use her vehicle to take Charlotte home. And I told her, I said, if for any reason I see bruises on you and I can tell the difference between, uh, oh, I slipped and fell bruised to, oh, I got the shit mm -hmm. out of me. And I told her, I said, I'm, I'm going to beat the shit out of them regardless. I don't care. That's just me. That's how I am. Correct. She, she told me, well, whoa, whoa. She did say that there's been times it's crossed her mind to do stupid shit, this and that. Like what? Like, basically, like, like not kill them, but like just beat the shit out of them, set them up, shit like that, right? And I told her, I said, well, damn. I said, you're talking to somebody that could do that, but I wasn't going to, though. She let me borrow the car. Uh, before I took her home, though, the friend of mine went to his cousin's house. Okay. okay, okay, let me stop you for a minute, John. Now, what I need is if we're going to have a relationship here to warden trust each other, already I'm starting to sense you're changing the story a little bit because realistically, everything you told me is identical to what she said. Now, I'll tell you here in a little bit when I think she starts lying. But now, so far, 
I can tell by your body language. Well, no, I'm serious. We took. Okay. We went to Mount Vernon. As a matter of fact, if you check the mileage, it probably all add up to. Okay. We went to Mount Vernon. It's not a house. It's a motel. But it, my friend, the one I took home last night. What's his name? Tay. He went home. He was with Tay Rams. Yeah, he was with me when I. Was yeah, I know. I know Tay. He was with me when I. I don't know where he lives, but we're gonna have to go find him. If he was the third person, go ahead. Let's talk. But uh, he asked me if I could swing him by his cousin's motel room. I took him to his cousin's motel room. He went in, come back out, said that his cousin wanted to talk to her about something. I stayed outside with the kids. She went in, they were in there for about 15, 20 minutes. They come back out. We went, dropped her off at her house. I helped to unload the kids, take the kids in. I took the car seats and set them on the porch. Then I took Tay home. Well, after I took Tay home, I chilled over for a little bit. Supposedly, from what I understood, supposedly we were going out here. All I was supposed to do was pull up, sit outside. They were going to go in, supposedly rough the dude up. Mm -hmm. This is what I was being told, but at the same time, I keep getting... And don't forget, you got you got a, a newborn baby you're looking after, blah, 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 this and that, right? Okay. Like, so now you get to the house. You are all three together. When we get there, JoJo tells me I got to get out. I'm all right. I thought I was supposed to sit in the vehicle. He said, nah, you're going to come up in here with me too. Uh, they go in. Uh, I'm the only person that knows the way out to the house. So JoJo asked me, like, where they where they sleep at? I'm like, man, I don't know. That's where I get caught in the ear. So I'm like, man, fuck. I'm like, man, look, come on. And I just walked up, stopped, and told him, man, look, upstairs. I like, the kids are up there too, though. Because the kids' room is upstairs also. They ain't go up. I have to go up in the middle. It was JoJo, me, and then the last dude. We go up. Go up. Then JoJo sits there. And that's when all hell breaks up. Beat the living hell out the dude. Honestly, me personally, I do not believe Samantha really had a hand to play in it. I think that what she was saying just kind of got took too far. Okay, so who, now what, what happened? Who beat the hell out of him? JoJo and the other guy. I was the only So what one. happened here? They beat the hell out of him upstairs, and what happened? He got drugged downstairs, got put next to the door. The other dude was upstairs, brought her down. Well, no, 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 no. They brought her down first. He did. The other guy brought her down first. And then JoJo made me come down. The dude came down, and he come down. The whole time he's got the gun to the dude's head. They come down. Get him down there. Jonathan claims that he was with Samantha when she went into a hotel room to talk with a man named Jojo. After Samantha leaves, Jojo tells Jonathan about a plan to rough up her husband, so Jonathan decides to go along with this plan. After they bring Samantha and Ernie downstairs, Jojo starts saying things about Ernie's father, which confuses Jonathan. The reason they went over there was to scare an abusive husband into changing for his family. But suddenly, the narrative changes, and Jonathan has no idea what is going on. Or at least, he claims he has no idea. I came back around the table and stood over here by the door. JoJo started asking some random questions. Like, I don't even know. And it had, all had to do with the dude's dad. All the questions had to do with this man's dad. Really? I swear to God, everything had to do with the man. So dad. you think he might have had a secret beef against him then because of his dad? It might have been. Okay. I don't know. I do know it was something about dad owed money, blah, blah, blah. I was That's why he was wanting to go there so bad, didn't he? It wasn't because he was hitting her, possibly? I don't know. Like I said, it could have been. I do not think Samantha no. had anything to do with okay. this. Because, yeah. So then, okay, so then you, you're downstairs. Okay. JoJo kicks the fool in the mouth. Tell him to pick him up. So I pick him back up, sit him back down. Other dude comes in with her, puts her in front of him. JoJo makes the dude look at her, starts talking about how, now what do you think you can do? Because the dude said, all I want to do is be with my kids. Please don't hurt my kids. JoJo said, well, 
what are you what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? He said, what can I do to fix this? They start laughing. JoJo said, well, what do you think you can do? You, you think you can come up with 20 grand in five minutes? Just shakes his head like, who the hell can come up with 20 grand in five minutes in the first place? And all this has to do because your old man don't want to pay. Some shit like that. I don't know exactly because the whole time I'm trying to, of course, I have a tendency of getting put in those situations by my choice of who I hang out with. <laughs> hey, but you can change that. I can. I try. All right, well, okay, go ahead and tell the story. From there, everything went from inside the house to outside the house. When we got outside the house, they had him up against the truck, hands still behind the back. Had his face down like this. What part of the truck? The hood of the truck. Okay, that makes sense. That's where, okay. They went through the truck. Apparently, I'm supposed to drive off in this truck. Or so this is their plan, right? Why do they want to take the truck? Joe Joe wanted the truck. Okay. So then what happened? Go ahead. So while they're doing all this, old boy goes back inside to make sure there ain't nothing else in the house. There's no phones or what all of it was, not right? Funniest part of it all, I know there's one phone that they don't have. I'm me personally, right? I don't say nothing. Else. But when they when he comes back out, he tells JoJo everything's good. They wrap him up, they take the blanket, wrap it around him. And at this point is when I start thinking, damn, what are they what the fuck's really going on? Because they put the dude in the back seat. Of the car. Yeah. Yeah, I can see the blood in there. And I'm sitting there thinking. The Which side? Car. Passenger side or passenger? Passenger side, back seat. Yes. Okay. And makes sense. As we're going, you guys tell me, all right, go here, go here, we'll I'm drive. We go all the way out to the country. Get out to the country. Next thing I know, they walk off. By themselves? No. They walk off, stop, like they go off over here, like, okay. Let me see that card real quick. Okay. All right. This is the wooded area. There's a creek bed here. We're parked here. All right. They walk off around this way a little bit. Stop. You can see them through the trees. You can't really see them though. JoJo comes back around, tells me, hey, bring me a cigarette and come on. So I get out and walk. And I'm like, man, what's up? We go over here, we go, and then all of a sudden they start cutting. And I'm talking about straight thorn action, nothing but thorn bush. Go back in there, Jojo tells me I stay there, so I stay back here. They come off a little bit deeper. A few minutes later, here they are coming back out. I'm like, man, what's up? They're all like, shit, go start the vehicle. Go start the vehicle, he throws me the keys. So I start going back to the vehicle, and in my mind process, this is my neck of the woods now. So you know where you're at? Yeah. This is my neck of the woods. We're fixing to go out there, me and you. We're going back out there. Uh, because everything you're saying so far is matching 100%. Okay. And this is my neck of the woods. So I'm thinking, damn, you just threw me the keys. Well, before I got any further, the other dude pops out. He starts coming with me. I'm like, what's up? He's like, man, I'm getting the vehicle too. Before I ever make the vehicle, all I hear is pop. As soon as Jonathan tells the detective that he knows where the body is, they both get into a squad car and go to where Ernie is located. I have not been by myself since. Okay, let's go. It's like, you seen, I didn't even have to keep coming when you came after me. John! Let's go for the body's there, because he's telling the truth so far, and then we're going to go get all four people involved, including Samantha, would be convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison. The final nail in Samantha's coffin would be her cell phone. The police found text messages between her and Jojo, where she told him to shut off Ernie's phone and ditch it. As for the motive, the only real motive they found was that Ernie planned on leaving Samantha and she feared losing her children. Please share your thoughts on this case in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.